This talk is about uh, settlement assurances and the protocol sync thesis, which are two separate concepts that really uh, stitch well together. Uh, and so we're going to go and define what these are and, and talk about its impact towards DeFi. Uh, first and foremost, I'm David Hoffman. Uh, I'm a, a degenerate tweeter, so you can go follow me on Twitter. I'm also the COO of Realty, where we tokenize US real estate investments and uh, put them into tokens in Ethereum and make them available for, for uh, purchasing and, and then putting them into DeFi. Our mission is to get real estate into DeFi. So you can check us out at realty.co. Uh, I'm also the co-host of POV Crypto, where me and my Bitcoiner co-host CK uh, bring people on to the podcast and approach similar subjects uh, and topics from our various uh, uh, camps, our various different perspectives. And that's been, actually been really rewarding for me and, and going through this journey of understanding what the hell this, this whole industry is about. Uh, I'm also the co-host of the Bankless podcast with Ryan Sean Adams, where we teach people and show people how to, co how to go bankless, how to li live a bankless life, how to use crypto tools to break up with your bank. And uh, so follow us on YouTube and, and, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, I also have done a ton of writing in this space, uh, also, which is uh, available on Bankless. Uh, each article has a nice little gift that, that goes with it. And all these articles are about uh, distilling and summarizing really important concepts in the Ethereum ecosystem into a, a very easy to uh, understand article. Uh, and this uh, talk is ultimately going to be one of those as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Settlement assurances. What, what is settlement assurances? Settlement assurances refers to the finality of a transaction, the confidence that you are able to have about accessing your assets, accessing your wealth, and the redeemability guarantees that some DeFi protocol can offer you about being able to access your money when you want it. Basically, it's the assurances that you have that your money is yours, that it's settled on a ledger in a way that you agree with. Uh, and so with previous legacy uh, settlement networks, we have different levels of, of settlement guarantees, uh, different times to final settlement. With the SWIFT network, you got 30 days. With the Eurozone SEPA transfer system, there's 13 months before a transaction is completed and finalized. And there's also this eight-week no questions asked uh, you know, just return policy for a money transfer, which is which is crazy. But that's all because these aren't protocol settlements. These are legal system finalities. So if you go and make an ACH transfer and then you roll it back, it goes into a dispute, which is a legal dispute. And so that can go to the court system and that can be like a fraud, which is a legal system. So ultimately these, these payment networks are determined by the legal system, which is why one, they are so slow and why they can be so slow. And this is really why Bitcoin was so cool way back when. Bitcoin introduced the concept of protocol finality. There's no legal system to go to if you disagree with a Bitcoin transaction. Like the, the transaction is final once it's included. And the one hour confirmation times for, for six blocks that exchanges generally use is orders of magnitude better than any other uh, payment network. And this is really the main innovation of crypto at large, right? And this is why we're going to proof of stake. This is why proof of stake is so cool. We get transaction finality in six minutes, uh, which is which is insanely fast. It's go already orders of magnitude faster than Bitcoin, which was already orders of magnitude faster than any legacy system. So protoc protocol finality is really important. And if you go to the Bitcoin white paper, you can talk about uh, you, or you can go and, and look at all these different references to like proofs or assurances or guarantees, um, you know, verifying ownership. Really, like 60% of the Bitcoin white paper is talking about settlement assurances in, in their own particular way. And further, like the concept of proof of work, it's really just proof of, of settlement. Like that's what this is. This whole entire industry is underpinned by settlement assurances. Uh, I, I'm borrowing this term settlement assurances from Nick Carter, her, who first coined it in his article, It's the Settlement Assurances Stupid, where he compared different blockchain networks and talked about why what's important and why these blockchains are all different and why Bitcoin is really the right one to pay attention to when he talks about settlement. And so this is what Nick calls the folk view of settlement assurances. Litecoin had this crazy awesome technological innovation where it tweaked a 10 minute block time into a two and a half minute block time. And then it advertised it as new and innovative and fast and, and lightning fast. And it was the fast block blockchain. 
And you, if in 2017, we all saw, saw charts like this where people would compare blockchain networks and it always used Bitcoin as like this slow, grungy old man walking with a cane. It's really just slow and it's just antiquated tech and Grossel coin and Vertcoin are going to come out and it's going to be faster and it's going to be new tech. It's going to be great. And this is really harped on. Bitcoin is this old, slow blockchain that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and that's really the opposite. So this is a graph of the fees being paid to the miners on a daily basis uh, for various blockchains. So Bitcoin is receiving $220,000 a day in fees uh, from the network. And then Ethereum is, is a little bit more than half at $120,000. And then things like Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash are coming in at a whopping $460 a day in fees, which is your settlement assurances. What these fees being paid are settlement assurances. And so like Litecoin, great, it has two and a half minute blocks, but like it only has $500 a day worth of settlement assurances. And so when we're talking about uh, transaction finality and what is real innovation here, the real innovation is the fact that Bitcoin provides you $220,000 a day in, in fees for settlement assurances. The O rule is a rule that, that Nick coined in his paper that talks about when you should really consider a blockchain transaction settled. And the O rule talks about that the value when when the costliness of the verification of the ledger exceeds the value of the transaction itself, you can consider it settled. So it's basically saying how if if you uh, if you make a one million dollar transaction, how long does it take to have one million dollars worth of settlement assurances from the costs of the ledger? And in this with this frame of mind, Bitcoin is lightning fast. It's the fastest blockchain ever. If you want to settle one million dollars worth of Bitcoin, it only takes you 0 0.04 days. Uh, and if you want to tr settle a one million dollar uh, blockchain transaction with like Monero, Monero is going to be five days. Bitcoin Gold is going to be twenty days till final sell settlement. Uh, Verge is seventy two days, which is slower than the ACH system. And so this is really the right way to to view uh, blockchains and settlement assurances. Bitcoin is lightning fast at settlement assurances. So this is the right way to view it. Like Bitcoin blocks way more. They pack a punch. They do more than Litecoin blocks. In the same 10 minutes that Litecoin has processed four blocks and processed four times as many transactions, it's actually only provided $2,300 worth of settlement assurances versus 90,000 for Bitcoin. And so Nick in, uh, Nick put up, up this graph of, of economic weight, the concept of economic weight, where Bitcoin blocks just way more. And this term economic weight, I'm gonna come back to later in the slide because in this presentation, it's really important. So that brings us to the protocol sync thesis. Uh, the protocol sync thesis this you might have recognized like this experiment from like high school or elementary school or something where you put different densities of, of liquids inside of a glass and the, the, because of the various density of the of the liquid it will stratify and it'll separate based on the on the density of the liquid and then you can also put physical objects in and they will also find its settling point of the various densities that that is appropriate and we find this in DeFi. We find this in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's no coincidence that Maker is at the bottom of the of like almost every single protocol that you use. The the ETH Dai pair inside of Uniswap, uh, Augur V2 is using Dai. Uh, anything that uses Dai is using Maker. So Maker is really dense. It's fallen down to the bottom of the protocol stack. Uh, and and things that are less dense are built on top of the things that are more dense. And so we need to ask ourselves, how do we find density? Where does density come from in DeFi? In proof of work, it comes from the Bitcoin blockchain, but DeFi applications, they're not a blockchain. They don't have proof of work. So we need to figure out a way to measure density. And we'll, we'll get back to that later. The point uh, I'm going to make here is that strong settlement assurances for DeFi protocols push things down to the bottom of the stack. Uh, and so the, the more settlement assurances you have, the lower that you will fall in this, in this DeFi ecosystem that you see here. And this is not only true for applications, but it's also true for assets. Uh, shout out to the DeFi market cap team for letting me steal all their icons. Uh, things like Ether is always going to be the asset on Ethereum that has the most settlement assurances because it's the native asset on Ethereum. And so anytime you add on complexity, you add a token contract, you add an application, you're adding on complexity and you're adding on bug risk, which means that Ethereum is it 
substrates with Ethereum is always going to be the M0 of Ethereum. Things like DAI, a really strong ERC20 token that doesn't have a burn and mint function inside of Ethereum is really close, but it's never going to get quite as close as Ether. And then we also have things like, like uh, real tokens, like my company, where it's a security token or WBTC, where you are trusting the issuer that is that they're not going to interfere with the settlement on Ethereum, right? And so, even though that you know a, a real token is an ERC twenty token like Dai is, it also it can be burned and minted by the issuer, which is my company. And so, you're trusting our company that we're going to do things right. And with Ethereum, you don't have to trust Ethereum. That's the whole point of the trustless revolution. I talk about this uh, this spectrum of trustlessness in the Bankless article, Two Faces of Ethereum, where I put this spectrum forth, where all of the all of the protocols that have no humans in them, protocols like Uniswap and Augur, they are entirely trustless and they're on the robotic end of the spectrum. And really what the spectrum is, is the settlement assurances spectrum. You can be assured that a Uniswap transaction is going to go through because it is an entirely robotic trustless system. And so Uniswap, we are finding is going down to the bottom of the settlement stack, right? It is, it is a very dense protocol. And we find this same model in our a traditional legal system. In the, Amer in the United States of America, we have these three branches of government and it really corresponds to, the th to different speeds of finality when it comes to passing a law. Uh, with the executive branch, the president of the United States, the president can just say, I deem this to be law. And, and then it, it is law. It is law. And, and then the legislative branch will be like, hmm, let me think about that for like two weeks and then we'll decide if it's law or not. And then the judicial branch, the Supreme Court comes in and says, hmm, let me think about that for, for two years or, or something. Let me consider all the evidence and really make a final decision. And that's the final settlement of a law. And really, the final settlement of a law really promotes long-term thinking. Uh, the long-term thinking of laws pr uh, promotes, or excuse me, the, the fact that the Supreme Court put something into law allows people to depend on that being true for all of time. No one is going, if, if no one is going to act and create a business or make have long-term plans based on an executive order. But when the Supreme Court says something is the way that's going to be, you can start to depend on that, which is which which is really important to take back that metaphor back to DeFi and talk about settlement assurances because companies can depend on Uniswap being there. Companies can depend on MakerDAO being there because of the density. Uh, and this just illustrates that the, the spectrums are the same in, in both worlds. And I, I've, if you've been following me, you've been uh, listening to me preach that Ethereum is this digital nation, which brings us to the concept of economic weight. Uh, again, this is where ec uh, economic weight was coined by Nick Carter for proof of work. But we need to figure out what is economic weight in DeFi. How do we find out what economic weight is in DeFi? Because there's no, there's no correlate. Well, I think there is a correlate actually. I mean, I'm gonna propose it right here and now. The way that we measure economic weight in DeFi is time value locked. Now time value is, is the units here. So the time value locked inside of an application. So you take the value that's been deposited into a contract. We call this locked in DeFi, you know, ETH locked in Maker, ETH locked in Uniswap. And then you multiply it by the time that it's been in the contract. Uh, and so that creates the unit of time value, time value units. Uh, and so here is the total value locked inside of MakerDAO. And so the time value of MakerDAO is just the area under the curve. Same thing with compound. Here is uh, you know, value locked in compound, area under the curve. In Uniswap, area under the curve. Uh, and so the density of these DeFi protocols is the amount of area that's under the curve. It's the time value of every protocol. And so MakerDAO is, if we want to measure the density of MakerDAO, MakerDAO is $1.8 billion months, or Compound is $1.1 billion months. Uniswap is $651 million months. These are the densities of these protocols. And uh, the density of DeFi at large is $2.48 billion months. That's the time value of DeFi. And that's how the world is going to come to trust DeFi. If you ever, if people are asking you like, you know, how do I trust, you know, the MakerDAO protocol or DeFi or whatever the hell this Ethereum thing is with my money, you can point them to the time value of DeFi. That's how we're going to gain trust in the system. And this is really just the Lindy effect. Really quickly, the Lindy effect is, uh, if you had to make a bet as to what is going to be here in 100 years, 
uh, between the White House and the, the pyramids? The obvious correct answer is the pyramids because they've already been here for 4,500 years. 100 more years for something that's only 225 years old, that's like a third of its entire lifespan. So you don't really want to, that's a risky bet. What's not risky is the pyramids. The pyramids are definitely going to be here in 100 years. Uh, and so that underpins this whole uh, Ethereum ecosystem. I made this, I had this little gift made uh, by a friend of mine. And, and the whole concept is that you, you get assurances from the bottom of the protocol and the assurances work their way up. Dependable, stable protocols are, are things that can be built on. And so Maker and Uniswap and, and Compound and 0x, these things that have strong settlement assurances act as stable infrastructure. And we can use time value as a mechanism to, to uh, measure how dependable these things are. And there's a through line here that I think is really, really elegant. Economic weight, settlement assurances, protocol sync. Things with high economic weight are assured to settle at the bottom of the protocol sync. It's, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. Uh, and so like, this is what, this is how we're going to see uh, DeFi applications. They're going to settle down to the protocol sync to these trustless end of the spectrum based on the time value locked in these applications. And so for here is our old model where, you know, we had limitations of how much settlement assurances we could have. And this is, it's really just like we had the top of the protocol sync, really like there, you wouldn't even consider this a protocol sync. This is just like whatever we have today. Now there's so much more room for more activities. Like there's a bigger protocol sync. There's more area for settlement assurances. And so uh, Ryan Sean Adams coined the term, the great protocol sync. I clearly have no original ideas. I just stitch other people's ideas together. And the idea is that uh, you know, centralized companies are going to ultimately be use DeFi as platforms to offer services because they can depend on DeFi protocols with strong settlement assurances to be there. And so we already see that's happening. The, the, the Winklevoss twins and Gemini and their exchange recently came out as on supporting DAI. Coinbase Custody is rolling out support for compound governance. Uh, you also can get uh, USDC rewards, which is using DeFi returns on USDC. And then we see entire companies building on top of protocols. Uh, we have the Dharma company just using DAI and Compound to produce this, this product, which is, what, which is Dharma. And so they're using these protocols in the set and the settlement assurances of these protocols to build dependable businesses. And so this is where we're going. We're going down to the strong settlement assurances of what is possible, which we've never had before. Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, it's all moving down towards the, cent the trustless end of the spectrum. And so this is my vision of, of Ethereum. Ethereum is going to, or, and, and the world at large, this is why we're all here. We are all here to provide the world with settlement assurances. The protocol robots that you see on Ethereum, which are DeFi applications, offer settlement assurances that you can't compete with with any other system ever. And so when it comes time for the world to be onboarded into crypto, they're going to be bankless and they're going to be bankless because of the settlement assurances offered by DeFi protocols measured by the, the time value of each application. And this is what this turns into. Every single person is this complete sovereign individual because of the money robots and the settlement assurances that, that we have. Every single person no longer needs a bank because a bank, what a bank does is it, is it settles things for you. But when you have Ethereum, you don't need a bank anymore. You don't need to trust any centralized institution to settle or manage your assets for you. So this is the concept of settlement assurances and the protocol sync is really important for living a bankless life. And, and uh, that is basically what the concept of settlement assurances and the protocol thinks, sync thesis represents. Uh, and so thank you for listening to my, my talk. And that will conclude.